we're continuing on the journey of uh, putting an end to fake love. And last time we talked about um, finding three people every day and two of those people should be ones that you have a tough time getting along with or people that you dislike. And you are to compliment them or say a nice word to them. Um, you know, you can be email, it can be Facebook, it can be in person, whatever works for you, every day. And because this series, honest to goodness, is the most important thing you will ever do in your life, um, I've put together a book to help you with it. As a matter of fact, my husband and I are doing this ourselves. Um, and what it is, is uh, it's a collection of lessons and, and journaling that I don't know if you can see or not but I have journal pages in here and lessons in between to help you do this series um, you're going to be recording uh, the people that you bless uh, and people you need to forgive and um, it's got prayers things like that but and all the lessons we're talking about are also in here um, for review this is available uh, you can get it through the Crew Corvus Weekly Asylum website or through lulu.com uh, it's called the Get Real Journal. It's really cheap. It's only six bucks. And I'm not plugging this because I'm a televangelist looking for money. Matter of fact, I'm selling this pretty much at my cost. So um, it's really cheap. And I'm telling you, it is going to change your life. But today we're doing uh, seeing people through Jesus' eyes, which is uh, a really big part of all of this when we realize just how hard it is for us to love other people uh, for real, especially people we don't especially like. You know, if you've been working on loving all people, you know how difficult it can be to say or pray anything kind to people that really tick you off or rub you the wrong way. But this is what we must do to truly please God and uh, put an end to our Christian hypocrisy and fake love. And the only way to do this is to see people through Jesus' eyes. Uh, you know, I'm sure most of us have heard this all before, but... I venture to guess none of us have taken it seriously even though according to Jesus it is the second most important thing in life next to loving God. I have included a lot of uh, scriptures in this segment just in case you have any doubts on what I'm trying to tell you. And so let's break it down. The first thing to understand is we are all born with self-centered selfishness. I mean, look at babies and toddlers and children. We have to be taught at a young age to share and to be nice to others because of our sin nature. We occupy a lifetime trying to rid ourselves of pride and selfishness, or at least we should be because it is the root of all sin and it is what clouds our vision. Our own pride and selfish nature hinders us from clearly seeing other people the way Jesus does. Our pride only allows us to see the outward appearance and the outward actions and the lives of people. All we see is the outward and present. Um, we evaluate people based on how they look, how they treat us, their words and their actions. But if we set aside our pride, our selfishness and judgment, we begin to see that true spirit within people. And that true spirit with, within all of God's people just wants to be loved and accepted. The next time someone offends you or does something you do not like, whether it be a family member, friend, neighbor, a co-worker, stranger, a celebrity on TV, a politician, a pastor, a priest, help yourself to love them by remembering the following. First of all, we have all have had different childhood experiences and upbringings, and some you know, of us are still very much affected by these today, especially the negative ones. Secondly, we all have good days and bad days and handle pain, stress, sadness, and disappointment differently. 
Third, we all have different relationships with Jesus, and some people have no relationship with Jesus, and that definitely affects how we treat people. Um, also, we all are a work in progress throughout life, and therefore, no one, none of us is ever perfect. Um, also, we all make mistakes. <clears throat> we all have thoughts and feelings that no one but God can accurately see. We ha all have clouded judgment of others because our pride and our pride affects how we treat people. We all are born with different strengths and personalities. And occasionally people become um, demonically possessed and do evil things they would maybe not normally do. So none of these things should be embraced as excuses for ourselves because each of us should be trying to become more like Jesus every day in spite of our circumstances. But, all of the things I listed um, are definitely factors and allowances we need to extend to others in our heart to truly love them with the love of our Lord. You know, Christians are called to love others, overlook faults, cover the mistakes of others, and leave all judgment to God, which means to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and assume the best of people. A beautiful quote from Joyce Meyer that sums it up. And I quote, Mercy understands the why behind what we do. Legalism only sees the exterior. And that's the end of the quote. So here's our real love exercise number two in uh, this series. For every negative thought you have about a person, think two good thoughts about them immediately. This is something God had me do back in my college days that was very life-changing. When I was walking to class, I used to judge everyone I passed, you know, on the sidewalk by how they looked. You know, I'd look at someone and think, know-it-all hippie or stuck-up cheerleader, arrogant jock, stupid Barbie, or redneck loser. You know, you kind of get the point. So, you know, God challenged me to think good things of people out of love. So instead of what I just said, I started thinking of the hippies, nice dreadlocks, or there's a pretty girl, or God has really blessed him to play football, or she looks nice, like a nice innocent girl, or glad he has a nice truck, and so on. The point is, we need to make a habit of love, and it's going to take intentional training, practice, and effort until it is automatic for us because the enemy has brainwashed most of us to do the absolute opposite. Our bad thoughts will poison us so it is important to think good positive things especially when it comes to people. So to review the assignment for this week, for every person your, our mind thinks negative shallow judgments of, we must immediately quickly think Two good things about that person, you know, even if they're just supervi superficial thoughts like nice hair, pretty person, you know, nice shoes, whatever, or even if they're assumed, you know, you can, if it's someone you don't know, you can just turn it around from thinking they're a jerk to, oh, I bet they're a nice person, they just have a, are having a bad day, which is why they look mean. You get what I'm saying, it's kind of dorky, but anyway, and if you want to, like I said, if you get the Get Real Journal, um, I have put a place in here for not only for you to log the people that you had to um, compliment, but also there's a place in here for uh, to list every all the people that you have a bad thought about that you had to quick think two thoughts about. And the reason I put this in there is because the more you have to write and recall how many people you judged, um, the more you're going to make a habit of not doing it because you're gonna get sick of uh, having to think two good things about people all the time so trust me it works I've been through it but uh, that's all for this week God bless uh, I'll catch up with you next time and please take this seriously and do this this is the most important thing you'll ever do with your life to change yourself to change the world around you change your circumstances your job your uh, friends everyone everything about your life will change if you do this series I guarantee it so that's all See you next time.